On this episode of Pedalbox, we're working on the Golf again. While it's on the driveway, we might as well get a few more jobs done ready for track days. The VR6 tends to run pretty hot. I normally see about 102 to 104 degrees Celsius oil temperature when I'm just driving along at 60, 70 miles an hour. Even with a bigger radiator, the front end was cut down so it could fit in. This is an original one from a VR6. They still run quite warm. And there's nothing really harming with that, but when you get on track, you can certainly get up to a lot higher temperatures. Now I've had this on the Nürburgring and it was eating coolant. And unbeknownst to me, about three quarters of the way round, it ran out. The temperature of the oil kept climbing and climbing and climbing. It peaked about 140 Celsius before I looked down and then backed off and coasted it back into the pits. But that's still not great. Now the oil itself was still in pretty good condition, all things considered. I have done a change since then, but it survived and I think I got away with it. But I don't particularly want to have that experience again. So one of the things that's been on my list for a long time to add is an oil cooler. Now I got this, the hoses and the sandwich plates second hand on Facebook Marketplace from one of the owners clubs and I can't remember who I got it from but if you can remember sending it to me, thanks very much. So we're going to fit this just behind the radiator. Now I've got fans on the front of this radiator so this is going to have to sit on the back. There's no real rule of thumb as to whether or not these are better on the front or the back of the radiator. I've seen them in lots of different positions on lots of very high power cars so it doesn't seem to matter so long as they have good airflow. And I think at the top corner here above the gearbox with good cross flow through should work pretty well. The front of the Golf doesn't take too long to dismantle. Half a dozen or so bolts and the lower valance comes away. A few clips and the grill comes off and then some more bolts and the lights come away from the slam panel. This is the front cross member and it supports the front of the engine. The radiator bracket also bolts straight through this into the chassis legs and holds onto the bumper. Some posts on forums suggest you can remove the bumper and the radiator support without supporting the engine itself, but I really wouldn't recommend it. Just put a jack under it and make sure it's supported throughout. That way you don't get crushed and the engine doesn't hit the floor. I put the radiator back into the radiator bracket. I spent some time last night cleaning it up and now we can start looking at where this is going to fit and where the oil cooler is actually going to mount. So the plan is to have this held approximately here across the radiator. Off to this side will be above the gearbox so it should have good free flow through because the engine sits more on this side. So with this mounted around about here we should be fine. Now I'm going to make a bracket that welds onto this side using some 30 by 60 steel that I'm going to cut down and weld onto this side and then I'm going to have a bolt on bolt off bracket that fits from this side on this piece of steel underneath and supports the rest of the intercooler. So we'll start off by making the bracket and welding it on. Now my support's on, I need to weld a bracket onto the end of this that we can bolt on and bolt off to this. And I'll do another one for the other end. I'm going to use this little piece of scrap that very ha handily seems to be the right size. I can slice this down and make up a little T-shaped bracket that will bolt on here and extend a little bit across the radiator, but not much, but still provide enough support to this bar. Now, you might say, why didn't I cut this a little bit longer? This is all I have of this and I don't particularly want to go and buy another massive long length, plus it's a Saturday, most places are closed that I would get this from, so I won't bother. I'll make do with what I've got. So here's the bracket that I've made ready to go on the radiator. I've trimmed it down a bit from some useless material and I've drilled some holes in it. Now they're a bit oversized, M8 is massively in excess of what's needed, but I have these M8 bolt cutoffs from before and I might as well use these rather than cut down some other bolts to make the mount. And here's the bracket all drilled and we've got all of our studs on. So now this just clips onto this side, a couple of nuts on each end and it's perfect. So the next thing we need to do is take our oil cooler and mount that onto this bracket now that we know where it's going to sit. That fits pretty well. Pop a couple of holes through, bolt it in and then this is good to go. 
And before I go putting all this back together, there's one more thing I want to address on this side of the car. This hole has been growing for probably about seven or eight years, just gradually getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's starting to spread around, and there's a couple other bits which are starting to get very, very flaky and crispy. So I've drawn around it, I'm going to cut it out and replace it with this piece of 0.8mm steel just across the top here, and then spray it up. Well, that certainly could have gone a lot worse. I managed to get it all done in one go, which is nice. Some of it did blow through and I was chasing holes through other bits of rust. So this little hole at the front has been filled in. At least that bit's not gonna rust. So last night I put a bit of paint on this chassis leg and then started cleaning up this one and wrapping the wires, generally doing a little bit of bay tidying whilst this was drying. So this is now all painted up as is the piece which goes across here and joins onto the oil cooler. But first we need to put this in so we can start looking at exactly how we're going to route the pipes because it's going to need to go from the oil cooler, which is going to sit about here, down onto this plate. And the pipes are fairly long, I can't reduce them in length, so we're going to have to route them somehow that's not a mess. Well, I'm glad I made this out of eighth inch steel and not anything thinner because I've had to cut it so that we can fit around the alternator. So now we can put this on and unfortunately I have missed my calculations. This fits on really, really nicely just about here like that. But the bolt on the bottom of this manifold gets in the way of it at the very top. So this is actually going to have to drop down about an inch to two inches, maybe an inch and a half I can get away with, which is annoying, but it actually doesn't affect the brackets too much. We just need to redrill a couple of holes and it should be fine. But it is still annoying. Measure twice, cut once, or measure three times, four times even. This was clearly not enough. Now I've remanufactured this bracket and the oil cooler is sitting a little bit lower now so it's clearing the manifold, the pipes come around nicely down towards the oil cooler. So we need to start installing the sandwich plate and that's not quite as simple as just unscrewing the cap and screwing a new one in. Now the first thing you need to do is to take this original cap off and if you have the plastic one you're going to have to source one of the aluminium caps like these. So this part number which I'll put on screen is 021-117-063. Now I've had mine off a couple of times, so it's quite easy, and it should just spin off. Now, this one's already been separated before, so I'm going to have to sit here and take this out. This is the original tube that you need to get. Now, this is a one piece on the later one. It's a plastic cap, so you will need that aluminium one. So you can get this tube out, because if you're retaining that, this is the part that you need. Now, if you're doing it with just the sandwich plate and you're replacing that, you can use this much shorter bolt. So this bolt just screws into the original cap, and you can get this from quite a few different places, but this screws into the original aluminium cap, and it bolts in as normal, just through the sandwich plate. So you put that onto the block, that screws in, and you eliminate this entirely. Now, you'll also need a rubber hose to go from this affectionately named crack pipe down onto the block, so you can bypass the water element, but essentially, that's all you need to do for that, and then plumb in the rest of your radiator. If you want to keep the original oil cooler, which I do, you need this bolt and you need to separate it from here, which is no mean feat. The only way I've found, which was on one of the forums somebody recommended, you put a bolt through this upper hole, put that in the vise so it can't turn without clamping on here and ruining the jaws, and then you put a 24 mil socket on a breaker bar and you twist this cap off. I've obviously already done that, which is why mine came out nice and easily. Then you need this piece. This is a Mocal unit, which is part number MOCM01. And they're about 30 pounds thereabouts, but this has the extension built into the cap and this threads onto the end of the original pipe. Then you put your sandwich plate in like this, and then this goes on through the original oil cooler and into the block. At least, that's the hope anyway. I haven't actually tested this. This bolt goes on here, 
and fits in. Unfortunately, it's still a little bit too long, but this is basically the only way I've found to do it. Now, there's a couple of different options here. I can either cut down the inner tube slightly and the outer cap so that it brings it in enough, or I can get a spacer made up to go between these two parts. I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet, so we'll come back once I've sorted this. So that's the sandwich plate installed. Now I had to trim the inside of the cap down. Those female threads go a lot further than the OEM pipe does. So you can trim a little bit off the top and you're not actually losing any thread contact. If you do need to take a little bit more off, you'll need to be very, very careful about how much thread you have left on it. And you'll need to trim out the threads on the cap itself to make sure that the body of the tube goes all the way down so that the flange comes right the way up to the top of the female thread. I can't test this right now because my oil hasn't arrived. It's still on back order and I'm waiting for that to be delivered, but I'm pretty happy with the seals. I think I may end up redoing the one on the back of here before I put the oil in once I can get one delivered, but we'll wait on that. With that all in, I can now put the radiator in and I can get everything buttoned up. Now, one good piece of news is a new radiator has arrived, so I don't need to put the old battered radiator in that was second hand to me and has been in this for 11 years. So all being well, it should run even better and definitely not leak any cooler. Thanks very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel, like and leave a comment about what you think. I'm going to leave all of the wiring because there's a couple of things I need to fix next time where I've pulled cables out of ends. So I'm going to tidy up a little bit more of this, get the front back on and have a look at a few other jobs to get this through an MOT. If you'd like to check out shop.pedalbox.show, you can have a look at our merch. We can try and get things sent to you as soon as possible. And if you'd like to support the channel, check out patreon.com slash pedalboxshow. Thanks very much for watching.